Sometimes a marriage is flourishing, it's blossoming. It's full of plenty and prosperity. There is affection, there is splendor, there is connection, there's trust, there's loyalty, there's fun, there's creativity, there's happiness. There's a dynamic energy in the home. And then sometimes there's a raw, there's a hunger. And a husband and a wife are starving. They're starving for an energy and it's not there. And they turn to each other and they say, you know, 17 years ago things were so beautiful. When did it all disappear? To? What happened? And they end up in Mitzrayim. The Medrash says it's Melosh and Meitzar. Restrictions. Narrow straits. And that's the moment when a relationship is bent on destruction. Especially if there is suspicion. Especially the lack of communication. Avram looks at Sarah and he says, He may know your daughter, he is she a fast marot. I'm aware that you're beautiful. Asks Rashi, really? You've been married to this lady for many years. He may know your daughter. I know now. Hoshantav says that when Avram came close to Mitzrayim, the energy of the place affected him. And his relationship was compromised. Avram always knew that Sarah was beautiful. But for Avram, physical beauty was aligned with spiritual beauty. He saw her beauty as a reflection of divine beauty. Now he comes to Egypt. And before he enters Mitzrayim, what does he say? I'm in trouble. Because I see you as a physical object. I don't see you anymore as a divine piece of beauty. And in the spiritual story, he tells her, Imri na'achaisiyat. At this moment, you have to become my sister, and I'm going to become your brother. I know we cannot be husband and wife anymore but we could still be siblings. What's unique about siblings is you're there for your sibling even if you're not passionate and romantic about it. If my sister calls me up 3 o'clock in the morning and she says, why, why? I'm stuck on the FDR and I can't find anybody to help me. Please come. And it's 3 in the morning. I'm exhausted. I don't think to myself, oh, I'm crazy about my sister, and I want my sister to give me attention. What I do think is, it's my sister. She needs help. You get her, and you go help her. But you're not emotional, you're not passionate, you're not in a state of love. Okay. But there's loyalty. She's your sister. She's your brother. You're there for your sister and your brother. You feel it? Great. You don't feel it? Tough luck. But you're there for them. So, Avram Avinu Kalsara, when you're in Egypt and you're starving, at this moment, you become my sister, I become your brother. We may not be experiencing the full passion of the relationship, but we have to know that the relationship is as powerful as ever, even though it's going through a down. Don't give up on it. That's what a sibling relationship is like. It's consistent, even if it's placid and tranquil, and it's not explosive and romantic and passionate. And when you work that through, Avram says, I won't do any stupid things in the process. I will remain alive. And not only that, I will be rewarded tremendously. Because when you work through that experience, and then you come back to a place of sobriety and sanity and depth, you'll never regret the fact that you were there for each other in difficult, challenging moments of the relationship. So there's two ways of looking at marriage. I become one with you because I love you. That's the secular version. The Jewish version is, I love you because I'm one with you. The Yeshiva.net